Hello, today I'm going to talk to you about how to get a literary agent and I'm going to do it in under five minutes or thereabouts. I've been running over slightly on these things and I think short is good. So uh, it's going to be a quick run through. First thing you need to do, the most important thing of course, is write a great book. That seems almost tautologically obvious. But I guess what I mean by that is really, really be tough with yourself about getting feedback, sharing it with people, getting reads. Reading it to yourself, I think it's an incredibly useful thing to do. You can pick up on little linguistic ticks and cadences that you may not notice when you're just reading things off the page. So really working as hard as you can to be honest with yourself about how you can make your book better. The second thing you need to do is work out what kind of book it is that you're writing uh, or have written. Go into a bookshop, stand there and have a look around, look at all the sections and work out where in this bookshop would my book be sold. Most submissions we get show a fundamental vagueness or lack of understanding about genre. And genre really is one thing and one thing only, which is it is a sales channel through which a book is sold. Uh, and while you may think you're writing some genre-busting um, novel that is, is, is impossible to categorise, a publisher is going to categorise it because they have to, because otherwise they're not going to be able to sell it. So understanding what that is uh, is really important and demonstrating your understanding of where your book sits in the marketplace or would sit in the marketplace demonstrates that you have taken a key step in, in being a professional or towards being a professional writer. Um, the third thing then, of course, is to pitch that book to the agent. Um, and pitch letters are an incredibly fraught and difficult subject. Uh, they are the source of enormous anxiety and quite understandably. But, but really, there's a really important thing about pitch letters, which is that they, they only need to do one thing. Every agent, every editor, everyone in this business is hoping that the next book, the next submission they read, is going to be their Jonathan Franzen, their J.K. Rowling, the moment that is going to transform their career, is going to validate the reason why they chose this job, and possibly even get them that yacht in the Caribbean that they've all been hoping for. Um, for very few, very few of us actually get. Um, so... So the goodwill is there, but we all get far more submissions than we can cope with. So we use submission letters and mistakes in submission letters as an excuse to uh, not read the rest of the submission. Because if we gave every submission its full, full consideration, we wouldn't have time to do anything else. So just make your submission sound like it's an intelligent, from an intelligent person to another intelligent person about this interesting project that you've written. That's enough. That will get me to page one, or possibly to the synopsis, the next thing you need to do. Uh, and synopses are really difficult, uh, and they can vary. Different agents have different guidelines, and you need to check, this is something we'll get onto in a moment, but you need to check guidelines, because some agents like long synopses. I personally don't. I find them very boring to read, but I do like a full page, reasonably detailed breakdown of the narrative arc. And the one thing I will say about synopses which are also really tough to write because they're very boring and they can be like a list and then and then and then um, and trying to make break that up or make it in any way read like interesting prose is tough but the absolute key thing and a complete instant no for me is if authors and it does happen quite often get to the climax of the book and then write and then dot 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 or words to the equivalent um, I'm a professional I'm allowed to know how the book ends. I'm not afraid of a plot spoiler. Uh, if you do that, you're simply preventing me from being able to evaluate your story. And so I reject it out of hand. Um, that may seem harsh, but there we go. Um, right, the final part of the submission package, generally speaking, is some sort of writer's CV. Uh, and this is also a source of great fear. Don't worry. Uh, it doesn't matter if you haven't been writing essays for the New Yorker since you were 15. Just, you know, just be honest. Uh, you don't have to be this amazing media personality. Uh, a lot of writers, a lot of successful writers aren't. And then really the final stage is, is research your agents. 
look up who's been doing deals once you've figured out the kind of book you've written. Who represents that kind of book? If it's science fiction, literary agents are not going to represent that, whereas science fiction agents or people who specialise in science fiction are not going to represent literary fiction. So figure out who to send it to and tailor your submissions. A personal submission, it doesn't make a huge difference, but it adds 10%, 15% of value to the submission. It makes me think this author's trying to be professional. That's a good sign. That's what we want to see. Um, and so, you know, fi figure it out and don't send out too many submissions at once. Um, probably about half a dozen is a good number. You will, it will take time for, for rejections to come through, but you're probably quite possibly not going to get an agent in that first round. You may, you may not. But you'll get feedback from them. You will figure out, maybe you think about the mistakes you might have made. You will figure out ways of submitting better. If you submit too widely, you run out of other agents to submit to. Uh, and that, roughly speaking, covers it. I've gone over five minutes. I'm at six minutes. What can I say? I hope that's useful. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.